Good evening, everyone. Good to have you here tonight in person and online. So uh, it is May the 4th, right? May the 4th be with you. That's right. What's that? Not much on. Yeah, yeah. We're on the short end of the day now. All right, let's see who we've got with us online. Your son's watching. Whose son? Yours. Oh, really? Gary Taylor and Gary and Donna are watching. Pam and Jerry. And that's all who said hi to me. So. All right. So let's. Uh, oh, Jerry and Dixie, good evening. Good to have you two. And, well, and Joshua Williams said hi, Daryl. So. <laughs> hi, Joshua. Look at that. I'm typing highs to people. Man, I'm going, I'm going to go crazy with the hello. I haven't had a typo yet, so that's a good thing. All right, let's do some birthdays. And Beth Heilman says hi. I've got to type hi to Beth now. So. I say hi, Daryl. I started to type hi, Daryl, to her. So. so. All right, uh, birthdays. This past Sunday was the first, right? So Judy Shoemaker had a birthday Sunday, and Dustin Tripp had a birthday Sunday. Justin Rawls has a birthday today, and so does Dawn Roach. So happy birthday to the both of you. Dwayne Aker has one Friday, and Jacob Ellis and Mike McLean have birthday Saturday. So uh, that's all the birthdays and Anna Heights for the week. Any Anniversary, no wedding anniversaries, but next week we've got several, but none this week. So good birthdays. Good birthdays. So, all right. Anybody online have a birthday? All right. Good evening, Marcina. Good to have you. All right, let's pray for these birthday people then, and then we'll move on to our our big prayer list. How about that? So, anybody have anybody else have a birthday in your extended family or anything? Nope, nope, nope. Okay. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for the day. Thank you for your love and for your grace and your mercy in our lives. And I want to thank you for these that have birthdays this week. We want to pray for them: Judy, Dustin, Justin, uh, Dawn, Dwayne, Jacob, and Mike. Father, thank you for them. Bless them on their birthday. Uh, Lord, life is a gift from you and children are a gift from you. So we thank you doubly for these folks and uh, thank you that you are at work, uh, Father, uh, in these folks' lives and pray that you continue to be with them and bless them according to your goodness and your will and your graciousness. And so, Father, thank you for the spring. And thank you for the sunshine and the rain that you send in your perfect time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Oliver Humphrey is with us. All right. Prayer list. Let me get a clean sheet of paper. This is not my normal one, but that's all right. It'll do. These kind of notebooks are a left-handed person's best friend because there's no... You know, the, the, yeah, those things are like torture chamber for ladies. So. That's exactly right. So it's exactly right. And when I use a power tool, I get plenty of fiber. So, too, because every power tool is made for right handed people as well. So it's pretty sad you're going to be talking about having like 100 guitars or two. Yeah. Yeah. When I pick around, I, 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 I do right. I play right handed just because it's a right handed world. So, yep. Sorry. Oh, yeah. 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 
Yep. 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 So yeah, it's a right-handed world for sure. All right. And Lisa joined us. Hello, Miss Lisa. Good to have you, Lisa Humphrey. All right, prayer list. Uh, let me look online. Continue to pray for um, Terry and the cancer treatment. Pray for Dolores Pribble, who's on our cancer list. Can you pray for Ralph and Darlene and Jerry and Dixie? We were told Sunday that Laura was going to the hospital. Yes, she is. It was her thyroid. Okay, she's been Yes, it was her thyroid called heart palpitations. And then we were going to get out. Oh, okay. Is she going? Yes. She's going to Walking across the park, I was back in the park of us. She's been on the hospital, so you okay? She goes, Now my heart's out of the house. So I can take care of myself. Okay. Okay. Wow. Well, we'll pray for her. Uh, Pam Land joined us. Hello, Miss Pam. Uh, what else do we have? Prayer list. Oh, someone told me that Butch Pool is having surgery coming up. Y'all know? Yeah. Uh, it's it, uh, Pat, my neighbor, told me that his sister-in-law. So, not sure. I can't remember the day, but it may be next week. So, I'll have to contact them. Yes, ma'am. Okay, pray for Barbara. She's in our classes. She's got a lump under her arm. Okay, we'll pray for Barbara. Billy Thomas from Dongola, he has a, a consultant of cancer stage four. Who's that? Billy Thomas. Billy Thomas. In cancer? That's what the sister reads for the first. Okay, we will do that. And uh, for Tim Aldridge, he had second surgery today. He's on our cancer prayer list too. I forgot to mention him earlier. My brother was unable to have dialysis Tuesday on his regular days. Okay. He went to the hospital and they uh, gave him some medicine that's going to clean out his port. Is that why he couldn't have it? Because his port? He was clogged up, so yes. Okay. okay, so pray so for he, David. So in the morning will be his next dialysis. Hopefully everything will go smooth. If he misses one, it's not a huge deal? Well, I think it is. It has been before. Uh -huh. When he misses, when he misses on, particularly he does Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday. Right. Yeah, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And it's, he has <clears throat> missed them before, and he gets sick. Oh, really? No, we get those. Right. You know, but so far, okay with this one. Huh? Well, he said he was okay. This, well, he, he built no more. Okay. He's got some stuff planned, some fun stuff planned, and he's afraid he's going to get sick and be off. Okay. And he. Yeah, so he's freaking out about that part of it. All right. We'll pray for David. Uh, Beth says, pray for Darlene Johnson that we pre praying for. She's stretching at the time she can go off the ventilator, you know, with her new lungs. Uh, she can go up to 13 hours so far. She needs to get to 24 to stay off of it for good. All right. We'll pray for Darlene. I saw a picture online that Beth had shared with me of the family, and that really, really helped put a... Uh, her and her husband and the two two little ones, the baby and the uh, other one. And so that helps to put a face with our prayer request sometimes, doesn't it? So. And Pam says, keep praying for Hayden. She's getting better, but appears to be mostly, mostly muscular. She uh, fell off a horse. So we'll pray for Hayden Land. And Kimberly says, hi, preacher. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Hola. Uh, Amiga, is that girl? Amiga, what, what girl? I forgot. Chica. Chica, that's it. I just call her chick, right? So, 
Oh, la chica. There we go. Uh, Billy Clover wants to know how baby Rowan. Rowan is doing amazingly well, I think, don't you? So he goes tomorrow for a checkup, so pray for him. But he has grown like a... Is he? Okay, so we'll pray for Rowan. Coming up like in a few months or pretty soon? Okay, we'll pray for Rowan then. And Mike Warden. Okay. Oh, yes. They forgot. So she did that uh, Sunday night, too. So. Thank you for catching that one. I was too busy working on my Spanish. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? All right. I saw yellow yesterday. Oh, did you? Did you go see her? Did you? Yes. Good. So, where is she? Do you have an address or anything? Or? No, okay. Good. Do you ever get cheap gas? Or you get in Philadelphia? It's across the road. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I know where the Lutheran I know where the Lutheran no. complex is. It's not that. In Cape, you're talking about, right? Well, you can describe it to me, so I'm not catching it right now. It's but. behind the tractor supply. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, have we missed any prayer requests? I don't see any online. Have we missed any out here? Good, good, good. Well, let's pray. Um, Cynthia, do you mind starting us out in prayer tonight? And then I will close it out. So uh, let's do that. Well, that's fine. So. Before we ever knew we had a need, Lord, you took care of us and sent Jesus Christ, your only God and Son. You took our pain and our shame on himself, Lord, and would you go through? We thank you, Father. And Lord, we thank you for being able to get here tonight. Lord, we just pray that you would hear this request, Father, physically, spiritually, Lord, minister to each other. Father, we thank you for the book of my mother, Mary Johnson, Father. Lord, she's come a long, long way. To see your hand in it, Father. We just pray that you continue to bless her. Lord, that she be able to return home to her family. And Lord, for Ralph and Darlene, Father, we thank you for what that you've done for them. Continue to minister here to, to Ralph. And give Darlene strength to the Lord that she needs. And also for Jerry and Dixie. Father, they want to get back to church as soon as possible. We just pray, give them the strength that they need, Lord. We thank you for your grace that's been sufficient for them all through it all, Lord. And for Gloria, Father, only you know. Wrap your arms around her. Forever, help them to get this hard rhythm in in rhythm for them. She would be healed, Lord, that she wouldn't have to have this going on in her time. And Father, we thank you for what she's so having similar symptoms for kind of girl. We just pray God be very near and with the prayer and help her to get in and get the medication Lord that she needs for this. And Lord, we pray for David's, or for David Young, who was a blessed Lord, we thank you for what you've done for him. And we just pray, God, to intervene in this dialysis. Lord, keep your hand upon him and bring him to his body, Lord, to the place in your sight. Father, we pray for um, Bruce. 
Lord, be us in so much pain. We just pray, God, that they be able to get the surgery moved up as soon as possible, and that he could find some relief and get some rest for his body. Lord, we pray for Butch as he waits the surgery on his foot. Lord, we just pray that you give the doctors wisdom and guidance, Lord, that they be able to take care of this problem. Lord, I want to thank you for the trip that you allowed the seniors to take last Thursday and to enjoy the beauty that you've given to us and for the fellowship that we had together. We thank you, Lord, most of all, that you gave us Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, that we could experience life and health and peace even in the midst of trials and tribulations, you are our peace, you are our comfort, you are our strength. Lord, bless this time together and we pray Daryl, give him the words that he needs to say to give to us, Lord, that we would be encouraged and lifted up and we grow closer to you in your lives. In Jesus' name. Father, as we continue in prayer tonight, I want to pray for the nation of Ukraine. Uh, Father, I pray that you would bring peace and end to war. I pray that you would rescue lives, that you would provide for those that are displaced and hurting and mourning the death of their loved ones. Uh, Father, it's such a terrible situation. And I pray, God, that you would uh, send salvation to many in the Russian army and they would turn away from their sin. I pray, God, for um, life. Father, you have made people in the image of God. And I pray that babies would be protected. I pray, Father, that uh, right would be right and wrong would be wrong. I pray that justice would be done for everyone that's created in your image, just not a chosen few on this earth that we administrate things correctly. I pray that we would treat people as image bearers, no matter, Father, what their color is, no, Father, what language they speak or what their background is, that, Father, we would honor men and women because they are made in your image. Uh, Father, I pray for uh, college students right now as they're taking final exams this week and next week. There's a lot of pressure on them. I pray, God, that you would be with those uh, that, that cry out to you and give them a peace that comes from you and clarity of mind as they work on. I pray, Father, for Phyllis, that you take care of her, Father. You know her health issues. God, help her to, to trust in you during this time. I pray for Debbie and Mike as they have these impending surgeries, God, that you have been with them so many times before, and I pray that you continue to do that. I pray for Rowan. Thank you that he has done so well as he's facing another procedure. I pray, God, that you would protect this little one and, Father, be with the concerns of his parents uh, and family. Uh, Lord, we, we pray for Hayden as she heals. I pray that she would be strengthened in her muscles and, uh, Father, that she would get back right where she was. Uh, pray for uh, David, God, that he would able to have dialysis tomorrow and that, uh, Father, he would be right back in stride to where he should be. I pray for those that are on the cancer list, like Tim. And I pray for Terry. And uh, I pray uh, for uh, Barbara and Billy, Lord. And all of these and their bat different battles with different cancers, Father, that your grace would be enough for them. And as they battle, the Father, the medications would do their appointed work. Uh, we pray for uh, Lord, Jerry and Dixie and Ralph and Darlene and Gloria, Gerald, Lord, that you would undergird them every day. Father, that their, their weaknesses would be uh, lifted up by your strength and be with their spouses as they care for them and give them perseverance and, Father, a strong faith. Uh, I pray for Butch as he has an upcoming surgery that you take care of this dear brother. And we thank you for hearing these prayers. And as we go to Esther 4 tonight, 
I pray, Father, that you would teach us, here we are in 2022, uh, about some spiritual disciplines that we see at work in this chapter. So thank you that you love us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely, absolutely. I got to praise the Lord. I just remember this. Uh, when we were on the way, when I was on my way here, Ali and I, she had asked me what we were saying in here tonight. That, <laughs> that's unbelievable. She asked me what we were studying, and then she told me that Chai was texting her wondering where she was at. So we were late. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It was, just, it was just uplifting that Aaliyah asked me. Good. Was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Esther, strong woman in the Bible, right? It's a strong, godly woman. All right. So here we are in Esther 4. So this is what's happened so far in Esther. Let me bring you up to speed. Um, we, we met the king, right? Ahasuerus and the first queen, uh, Vashti, right? Vashti has been disposed because she wouldn't do what the king told her to. And uh, she stuck with her guns, didn't she? And so I, I, a new queen was found. And God, this is the way the chapter two tells us, is that God, or it doesn't say God, but that she found favor in everyone's eyes. And of course, we know that comes from the Lord, right? Uh, it probably based on her personality, based on her beauty, based on the blessing of God, because she was a beautiful woman and God used her, right? So put her in queen. So we were introduced to Mordecai. We know Mordecai saved the king's life from, from two of his guards that were going to assassinate him, right? And that was recorded in the deeds. And then last week we were introduced to the villain, Boo Hiss. And the villain was this guy by the name of Haman, who is a descendant of the Amalekites, enemies of Israel. And so now we have the battleground. It's a, uh, it, it's people, two peoples, they hate one another, Amalekites versus the Jews. Well, one of them is second to the king, right? And that's Haman. And that's where we are. He has, Mordecai refused to bow to him and honor him. And as revenge, he not only wanted to kill Mordecai, he got the king to sign a decree that on a certain date, months down the road, that anyone in his empire could freely kill and plunder uh, the Jews. They could go into their homes, kill them, and take whatever they want. And uh, so uh, that's where it stands as we begin Esther 4. It looks pretty bleak, doesn't it? And so we begin Esther 4, and in this passage... Esther begins to rise as the heroine that she is. And so that's where we're. But we also see some great spiritual disciplines of prayer and fasting taught in here. So we'll, we'll, we'll chase that a little bit as well. So let's go ahead and start reading 4.1. Uh, when Mordecai learned all that had been done, and we're talking about the decree, right? Because remember, Mordecai was up in government. He, he, he was always at the gate, which would have been, Kind of like the courthouse, right? <laughs> he was always at the courthouse. He was a leading official. Mordecai tore his clothes, put on sackcloth and ashes, and went out into the midst of the city. So he leaves the gate, and he goes out just in the city, and he is uh, has sackcloth and ashes and went out, and he cried out with loud and a bitter cry. He went up to the entrance of the king's gate, for no one was allowed to go into the king's gate clothed in sackcloth. Huh. And in every province, wherever the king's command and his decree reached, there was a great mourning among the Jews with fasting and weeping and lamenting, and many of them lay in sackcloth and ashes. So let's stop and talk about sackcloth and ashes. How many of you keep that in your closet ready for a good morning? Anyone? So... Not not M O R N M O U R N right morning, and so where do we see sackcloth and ashes in the Bible besides Esther? So think of the stories. I've got a few, but I'm going to give you an opportunity. <coughs> what? Job. That's right. Job was in uh, in. Uh, 
sackcloth and ashes. In Job 16, it says, I have sewed sackcloth upon my skin and I've laid my strength in the dust. My face is red with weeping and on my eyelid, eyelids in deep darkness. Although there is no violence in my hands, my prayer is pure. So he, because he was sad, he was downcast, he was humiliated, he was humbled, he, he, was, he, he was heartbroken. That's why he was in sackcloth and ashes, right? Joe, uh, any, can you think of anywhere else? Sackcloth and ashes. Nineveh. Oh, yeah. What's that? Uh, Jonah. Jonah, the Ninevites. Remember, you know, the fish god worshipers, right? Job goes to them. Judgment's coming, right? And this is what it says in Jonah chapter 3. The word reached the king of Nineveh, and he rose from his throne, and he removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes, Right? And he issued a proclamation and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm leaning back and I'm cut off. They can probably see the top of my white head and that's about it. All right. Uh, anyway, by the decree, of the decree of the king and his nobles, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and let them call out mightily to God. Let everyone turn from his evil way and from violence that is in his hands. Who knows? God may turn and relent to turn from his fierce anger so that we may not perish. So not only were the people in sackcloth and ashes, he says the animals are be in sackcloth and ashes. Now, they'll put a shirt on my little dog on occasion, but he's only 14 pounds. On the cow, that'd be a little different trick. I guess it was a blanket that they put over it or something like that. So why are they in sackcloth and ashes in Jonah? So Job was because he was sad. He was heartbroken. He was humiliated, right? He had lost everything. So why is it in Jonah? Mourning their sin and asking forgiveness. Yes. So they're mourning in a different way, aren't they? They're broken over their sin, right? And it's also a sign of, uh, of repentance. Couldn't you say that? And so that's what they're doing. Uh, in the book of Jeremiah, and this is one I didn't know of until today, um, it, it's talking about destruction that's going to come. Jeremiah's a prophet, of course, right? This is what Jeremiah says. O daughter of my people, put on sackcloth. He's talking to the whole nation, acting like it's a daughter, right? He says, put on sackcloth and roll in ashes, Make mourning as for an only son, most bitter lamentation for suddenly the destroyer will come upon us. So people would lament because they lost and they would mourn in sackcloth, maybe when they lost a loved one. And that's the picture that we have in uh, Jeremiah. This is what David says about Abner. Now, Abner was a general of the enemy's army of Saul's army all right but Saul was assassinated I mean uh, Abner was assassinated and this is what David says as a matter of respect to Abner then David said to Joab and all the people who were with him tear your clothes put on sackcloth and mourn before Abner so they would they would put sackcloth and ashes on as a sign of mourning because of death sometimes so this is what we're seeing in the Bible uh, sackcloth and ashes, if you're, uh, you've been uh, maybe humbled, uh, you're in humility, humiliation, like Job, you're sad, you're mourning over that, right? And sackcloth and ashes. Uh, sackcloth and ashes because you're repenting of sin, right? You, you realize you've done evil against God. And so you put sackcloth and ashes. It's a reflective of the inner... Uh, humility that you're showing and, and repentance that you're showing, right? It's a physical manifestation of that. And then we also see people would do it to mourn uh, the loss of, of loved ones, right? And so we see all of these things at play for sackcloth and ashes. Now that's a very visual thing, isn't it? So, uh, and, and I've always had 
I don't know why, but when I think of sackcloth and ashes in my mind, I always think of someone wearing a burlap sack, you know, potato bag. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that, that's what I've always doubt. I'm, I'm not really sure what sackcloth looked like, but but for me, even as a, as a child, I thought that. I always thought of a burlap sack, you know. I, I'm not sure what their their sackcloth was made to have, or, but but it wasn't something that would have been beautiful, probably, right? And I know what ashes are. That's left over after you burn something, and so uh, it just you know burnt up charcoal, right? So uh, and so sackcloth and ashes as a sign of mourning, as a sign of you've lost someone, and 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 you're sad, you're heartbroken, you're mourning in another way, and then mourning because of sin, right? Uh, and, and the humility and the repentance that comes along with that. So, so all of that in, uh, in the Old Testament, I've got several more too. Um, yep, yep, I've got that one. Daniel was doing the same thing, yes. If Mordecai and formed his niece, what was to come? What would happen to her? Well, he's going to tell what he thinks is going to happen to her. So uh, uh, he doesn't think she'll escape any more than he will. Uh, but she was Jewish. Yeah, that's right. She was. She was. So anyway, so Mordecai is, and, and all the Jewish people were mourning. They weren't necessarily repenting of sin but they were mourning because of the destruction that was coming upon them. That was a visible way of showing that. And it's a very biblical thing. Um, Nehemiah, uh, same thing. Uh, he, he was, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. Well, we don't see that she did. Uh, the Bible doesn't say that, but uh, we, maybe, maybe she did. Maybe so. she was fearful, fearful of the Bible. Yeah, she was. It she was. Elders of Jerusalem and Lamentations. Yes. Yeah. We've it, it, yeah. It's amazing how many times you find sackcloth and ashes in the Bible. Uh, oh, did he? Did he have sackcloth? I hadn't seen. See, that's sackcloth, a very coarse, rough fabric woven from flax or hemp. Really. So it could be a good old potato sack then, yeah. huh? So. That's a picture from here of it, and that's kind of what it looks yeah. like. Is it? It's, uh, yeah. Very yeah. loosely. Sounds very uncomfortable. <laughs> Do they make like a modern version that's cotton and real soft and it doesn't change the skin? Or? Oh, and I guess the discomfort would match the discomfort of your soul, right? As it chafes and it rubs and it's. I mean, a very visual and a very, I mean, how many of, of your senses does it engage, right? You know, I mean, you may smell bad, you're itchy, you're uncomfortable, you're miserable on the inside and the out, right? So fit the bill. So that's what we've got going on. So anyway, let's press on verse two. Uh, no, verse four. When Esther's young women and her eunuchs came and told her, the queen was deeply distressed. She sent garments to clothe Mordecai. So now he couldn't go into the king's gate if he was in sackcloth because he, he that was law, right? But so she's sending him garments to get dressed so she can talk to him face to face and he's going to refuse it. Uh, so he would not accept them. Then Esther called for uh, Hathak, Hathak, one of the king's eunuchs who had been appointed to attend her and ordered him to go to Mordecai to learn what this was and why it was. So, you know, apparently she has some trusted servants, didn't she? Because remember, her Jewishness was a secret. But apparently it wasn't a secret to Hathak, right? Or, or some of her inner circle. They, they, they knew because they did conversations for her, didn't they? Uh, so anyway, he, he goes to Mordecai in the open square of the city in front of the king's gate. And Mordecai told him all that had happened to him and the exact sum of money that Haman had promised to pay into the king's treasuries for the destruction of the Jews. Now, I thought this was interesting when I was reading. So we, do you remember how this started? This started because Mordecai refused to honor Haman. So I wonder if Mordecai is feeling some guilt as well because he 
started this mess kind of, didn't he? I don't know. I had never thought about that today until I read it somewhere. And I thought, huh, I wonder if he was. The Bible doesn't indicate that or say that he does, but he was definitely mourning, wasn't he? But the rest of the Jews were as well. And he was being obedient to the Lord. Right? right. Yes. Yes. Well, you know, the the Jewish people would bow before their kings, but not in worship. And so what I've read in commentaries in, in that setting, they would see these people almost godlike. And so Mordecai, yes, it would have been, uh, you know, didn't want to, to, to give honor to someone that only God that should receive that kind of honor. But it could have been because he knew who Haman was and he wasn't going to buy bow to this Amalekite either. <laughs> so we, we don't know. The Bible doesn't clearly say, but, but I think it was for probably good godly purposes because Mordecai is painted as a good godly Jew, right? So anyway, press on. Uh, Mordecai also gave him a copy of the written decree issued in Susa for their destruction, and then he might show it to Esther and explain it to her and command her to go to the king to beg his favor and plead with him on behalf of her people. So Mordecai is uh, pulling rank as adopted dad, isn't he? And he says, you tell that girl, <laughs> you tell the queen that Daddy says she needs to go and say something to the king, right? And uh, all the king's servants and the people of king's provinces know that if any man or woman goes to the king inside the inner court without being called, there is but one law to be put to death except the one to whom the king holds out the golden scepter so that he may live. But as for me, this is Esther, I have not been called to come into the king these 30 days. All right, so here's the setup. Uh, now, this is a piece of information we didn't know, but apparently it was unlawful to go into the presence of the king if you had not been asked or demanded to come into the presence of the king. Uh, apparently that's law. So you just don't show up and say, hey, king, how's it going today? You know, you know you're going to be on the gallows or whatever, right? Uh, but if he shows his favor with the scepter, then you're in good stead. So the bottom line is you don't go into the king without an appointment, right? You just don't do it because who's going to risk their life to say, yep, I like him. So or I don't like her or I do like her, you know, whatever it is. And so it says in here that Esther had not been in front of the king for over 30 days to over a month. So maybe Esther's thinking, maybe I've lost some favor with the king. Maybe that's why he hasn't called me for 30 days. She doesn't know. So is it going to be risky for Esther if she goes in front of the king unannounced? Yes. Absolutely. It could cost her her life. So that's the setup. Um, let's see. Verse 12. And they told Mordecai what Esther had said. Now listen to Mordecai's response. It is wise. It is just oozing with wisdom. Then Mordecai told them to reply to Esther. Do not think to yourself that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. Now, that's what you were saying, isn't it, Bob? So Mordecai's thought was, Esther, it's a secret that you're a Jew. You've never told the king, and the only people that know in your life are apparently Mordecai and this inner circle around her, right? But you know what? Word's going to get out. You think you're safe behind those palace walls? You think you're okay in that part of the harem that the king has for you? Uh-uh. It's going to find out you're a Jew, and somebody's going to take you down. All right. So uh, a little dose of maybe realism. Right. So, uh, um, you know, send the time. Do you ever think that uh, something applies to everyone else except for you? Is, it, is, is anybody ever guilty of that? We all are at some point, aren't we? Yeah, that doesn't apply to me. Well, yeah, maybe it does apply to you. Right. You have to pay the taxes too, but whatever it may be, uh, maybe Mordecai thinks that Esther is thinking she's safe. Well, too bad, Daddy Mordecai, right? Nice knowing you, but, but he says, don't think you're going to escape. 
honey, you're in danger too. This may take your life. So he puts a little uh, uh, maybe fear of the Lord into her at that point with that. Um, verse 14. For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Wow. So now her parents are already gone, right? So uh, if she dies, then the house is gone, right? So, so what Mordecai is showing is a faith in God. He believes that God is faithful and God's going to deliver the Jews. Even though he's mourning, he, he, he believes that God's going to deliver the Jews, doesn't he? He says, if you don't act, someone else, God will raise someone else or something else and God will rescue his people, but it won't go well with you. So he's really putting a lot of pressure on her, isn't he? And just think, she's probably still a teenage girl, right? Man, that'd be a lot of pressure. Um, and then he says this. This is a quotable line. Put this on your craft plaque, right? Because this could be all of us, this next phrase. He says, and who knows whether... You have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Wow. So the last little dagger is this. Esther, God has put you here as queen for this moment in time. Wow. So how many people in history, God has put them in a position so he can do something through them. So could God do that through us? So think of your life. You know, we're told this in Esther's life, but just maybe think of the times that God put you in a position of influence or authority or where you can step up and do the right thing when others are not. And no one ever knows. But God puts you there. So what, well, what it is, is man, what a high calling to be people of integrity, even when we don't know for sure that God has put us there for that, but God may have put us there and we're to do the right thing regardless, right? And, and so we see this all over the Bible. Man, the man uh, who sinned, this man or his parents that he was born this way, remember? Before Jesus heals him, well, neither one. God put him here for this moment. So the glory of God will be dis displayed in his life and people will believe, right? Wow. So God allowed that man in this condition. What about Judas? Yeah. When he put there for he, he, he may have been. He may have been. And, 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 but we, we see this, we, all of the scripture, and man, today we see it. Today, it's still going on because God is still working in time. God is still working in people. God is still working in history. We can't read about it because the Bible's closed. The canon's closed. But we know God's still working, right? We're, we're somewhere in the book of Revelation. Don't know where, but we're somewhere in there, aren't we? And it's coming to its, its, its end. So that is a great one. So if I was a crafty person, I would make a plaque and I would put on there, you know, you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. You know, there you go. So I, I think years ago we had one that said, as for me as my house, we will serve the Lord. That's a common one. I think this one will go right along with that, you know. Pastor, over and over again in the Bible, it's told where certain things happen and death can occur if they don't take a stand. Recently I was reminded of Ruth. She lost her whole family. But yet, in, if you follow the genealogy, she was one part of David's family. Yeah, she was. Yeah, she had to go lose everything she had and go back to a country that she had left. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and sometimes I think, Bonnie, it's twofold. I think sometimes because uh, natural consequences, you know, because sometimes God, I think, does this. Hands off, and he allows natural consequences to come by. And is that part of God's judgment? Yeah, maybe so. You know, because his protecting grace is not on that person. And, and sometimes it may be the discipline of the Lord, you know. 
be, because uh, just, you know, one of the craziest scriptures is in a Lord's Supper scripture in 1 Corinthians 11. You know how Paul, uh, the Lord revealed to Paul what, what happened uh, the, the night that Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper, right? And he talks about not taking the Lord's Supper in an other unworthy manner. And he says, some among you have fallen asleep because of this. And he's talking about the Lord's taken them because they took the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner. That's pretty heavy. So sometimes because of disobedience, it is, it's the discipline of the Lord, right? And, and that may have been is what Mordecai was insinuating to Esther is, uh, man, God's going to deliver the rest of us. But if you don't act and he's put you here, watch out, you know, watch out for the Lord's discipline. So anyway, pretty heavy duty stuff. And, and I think this is a uh, be strong and courageous moment for Esther. It's something good to ponder on. You're given an opportunity to serve. And, you know, oh, absolutely. To think, well, maybe God has put me here. Yes. For this yes. Yes. And he does and he has and he he, he, he he continually does. So, but but this is a good one. So this is Esther's response to Mordecai. Right, so uh, poor, poor, this poor eunuch is probably tired because he's running back and forth <laughs> as as the go between, isn't he? So here's Esther's final response. Then Esther told them, uh, "Let's see, I lost my place." Then Esther told them to go to Mordecai, go gather all the Jews to be found in Susa. That's that's the city where they are, and hold a fast on my behalf, and do not eat or drink for three days or night. So this is a complete fast. Right. You know, you can have uh, partial fasts. Daniel had a partial fast in the book of Daniel. You, you talk about chapter nine, you go into chapter 10. He fasted of choice foods and drink as he was praying uh, for, for God, uh, for God's timing and God's deliverance. Um, so you can you can fast from certain things or certain times a day. What Esther calls for is a complete fast. What you think of? You don't eat or you don't drink for 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 three days. Now I'm sure they had water because you know that could you know. But but there was nothing but what what kept you alive, right? For three days. That's what she calls for. And she says, "I and my young women will also fast as you do." So I think that was a very interesting uh, statement that you made earlier, Willie. I wonder if you know Esther wore sackcloth. Well, for those three days, could she have wore sackcloth? She might have. Doesn't say, but very well could have if she's fasting, right? Um, because we see, do see in some of these with Daniel and with others, sometimes sackcloth went along with fasting too, didn't it? So uh, we're going to look at some fasting scripture just in a moment. Uh, then I will go to the king, though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Wow. Is she stepping up to the plate? Yes, she is. Brave woman. Um, listen, if you were right there with her, walking with her through this, it'd be a lot scarier than it is us reading it all these thousands of years later, right? Mordecai then went away and did everything as Esther had ordered him. So I think it's interesting. Mordecai ordered daughter Esther, you need to do this. And then Esther turned around as queen and said, you do this, right? You fast. So it doesn't mention the word prayer there, does it? But what good would fasting be without prayer? It'd just make you hungry, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, what are you going to do? Think about it deeply? I mean, you know, you're going to pray with it, right? And so listen in the scripture to what we find about, um, about fasting. Let me turn the page. Um, Nehemiah 1, 4 through 6. As soon as I heard, he heard a bad report in Nehemiah about the walls and how the city was, right? As soon as I heard these words, I, words, I sat down and I wept and I mourned for days. And I continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. So what's he doing? He's praying, he's fasting, and he's mourning, right? And, and that's part of this uh, repentance that we see. And I said, oh God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments, let your ear be attentive 
and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant, I now pray before you day and night for your people. Uh, confessing the sins of the people of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Even I and my father's house have sinned. Wow. So Nehemiah is fasting and he's praying and he's confessing sin, isn't he? All right. This is Old Testament. Daniel does the same thing. Uh, he's in, but, but with his fasting and praying, he had sackcloth and ashes. So interesting, earlier we saw sackcloth and ashes as a sign of mourning because destruction was coming. But now in Daniel, we have sackcloth, ashes, fasting, and prayer together. And, and that sound seems to make sense, doesn't it? They seem to go together. Your mourning, your, your outward appearance reflects the inward turmoil and, and angst and, and, and a sadness and mourning that you're going through and repentance, right? And so you show that on the outside. Uh, 2 Samuel 12, 16. David therefore sought God on behalf of the child and David fasted and went in and lay all night on the ground. You remember that incident? So David is praying over uh, the baby that Bathsheba is carrying. It was conceived in adultery and murder, right? And, and the prophet says, this baby will not live. And David is interceding God and fasting, asking God to save the baby, isn't he? And then uh, look the book of Luke. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanu, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 84. So she had lived as a widow most of her life. If she was a typical teenage girl, let's say that she was married at 15, she had been a widow since she was, what, 22, right? And she was 84. She'd been a widow a long time. And it says this about this prophetess Anna. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. So she wasn't repenting. She didn't have sackcloth. But what was she doing? She was seeking God, wasn't she? So, and, and we see that in the New Testament. We see people fasting and praying. And so when the hunger pain comes, it's a reminder to pray, right? Because you're inwardly tore up because your body is hungry, wanting food. And so you outwardly cry out to God, uh, not to beat this need, but whatever you're praying about, God's will, uh, God's work, whatever it may be. So prayer and fasting is underrated. And we don't preach that much, do we? We don't teach that a lot. But it's a spiritual discipline that we see frequently in the Bible. Uh, the Pharisees did it on a regular basis. And you remember what Jesus says? He says, you know, don't mourn and paint your face and all this stuff like the Pharisees do. So maybe Jesus is saying, listen, don't put on sackcloth and, and, and not take a bath and, and let your face be dirty and downcast so people will see that you're pretending to be pious and righteous and faithful. Take a bath, put your clothes on, and then you go to your closet and pray, right? Go ahead and fast. But, 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 you know, don't do it for a show. So is that saying, you know, in the privacy of your home, if you put on sackcloth and ashes, that's a sin? No, 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 no. It's just saying when, when we are brought to a place where we fast, it is heartbroken mourning over something we are asking God to do in our life or someone else's life or for an answer from the Lord, or we're seeking the will of God for our life, or whatever we may be wanting to have earnest prayer for. But that's a spiritual discipline that we just don't give much attention to. And, and maybe we should more, right? Uh, it, it was in vogue for many years. I don't know if it still is, the Daniel fast. Have you, you heard of that? It's like a 40-day thing, and you, know, you only eat certain things like Daniel did in the book of Daniel 9 and 10. And so, uh, uh, but, you know, that is not law. You know, that's just someone, you know, spinning something. And, and but, but fasting is this. You're seeking God, right? And so you're foregoing food or some kinds of food or a portion of the day so you can dedicate that to prayer and seeking God, right? So that is something we should do. Esther teaches us this, right? And Mordecai teaches us this. And, and it's just a good spiritual discipline for us, so. All right. Um, disclaimer as far as health wise, 
don't make sure you check with the dog. If you're going to like plan a yeah, three-day fast sure. or a month. Oh, don't absolutely. Fast, don't just do yeah. it. Go yes. Check the yes. Dog, that's all right. That's right. So if you're a diabetic, you know, and you have, you know, there's something, you know, there's health issues. Yeah. Yeah. It, you, you need to be, you need to be smart. Um, this guy, a pastor, uh, matter of fact, he was the president of the executive committee until recently for the Southern Baptist Convention. Name is Ronnie Floyd. You ever heard of Ronnie Floyd? And back when I was in seminary, Ronnie Floyd was known for 40 day fasts and prayer. And uh, now I don't know what his routine was, if he did water juices or whatever it was, but 40 day fast was his thing. And he's always been a huge prayer guy. And I've always admired that because I'm terrible at that. You know, you know, fasting for me is, you know, I, I ate a snack at seven o'clock and it's six o'clock the next morning and I'm ready to break my fast. Right. So uh, with, with some scrambled eggs, but, uh, uh, but, but it's a discipline uh, that, that we definitely underrate. And then the food, it, it, I've tried it before, and I mean, the food that you get around is just so great. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just the, yeah. the way the devil works. I mean, you're trying to keep yes. places, but it's just like, it just gets thrown at you. You're like, oh, man, yeah. that came from there. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, you know, man. if God leads anyone to, to prayer and fasting uh, online or, or here, let me know how it goes. Not, you know, of course, we're not bragging, oh, look at me, I'm spirit, but just, you know, you know what, what? What was the experience like? You know, what? What do you feel like God is telling you? You know, what's God doing in your life through that? So, uh, but but definitely be be healthy about it. If you're not capable, you could. You know, there's all kinds of ways you can do fasts, right? It doesn't have to be a complete fast. If there's health issues, you could fast by only by by certain things out of your diet. You know, like the Daniel choice foods, no choice foods. You just like eating basics, right? No, nothing special. Just plain, whatever. So, all right. I see nothing else online. So either they're all disconnected or they're satisfied. I'm not sure which it is. So, so we're good. Do you see anything, Bill? Online? No. All right. It's, it's all crickets. He said he was going to go all the salad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bill's going to give up salad for a moment. Yeah, that's it. That's right. So, yeah. So what's the what is it that uh, rhubarb? I'm gonna give up rhubarb for the whole year, yeah. right? So yeah, so yeah, yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> so. Rhubarb. We're talking about rhubarb. Rhubarb. <laughs> It kind of looks like celery that's going bad, you know. It's, it's what you know. It's good. Got that. <laughs> if you put enough sugar in it, I'll eat it. So, so yeah. If you put enough sugar in it, I'll eat it. But if it, you, ooh. so anyway. All right, let's pray. We'll be done. So, uh, Father, we thank you for the day. Thank you for the lessons from the Book of Esther. Uh, thank you, uh, Lord, as we we learn not only about you know the the uh, the calling of God on Esther's life and her, her adopted father realized this and called her on it, Lord. And she responded, Father, in faith and courage. And so, Father, let us have faith in you and let us be courageous for you. Not foolhardy, but Lord, uh, let us do so because you have called us to something, Father. And so we are risk takers for you. Uh, Father, I also pray for this spiritual discipline of a prayer and fasting that we've looked at tonight. And, and Lord, you lead us to certain things. And, and Father, I pray that you would, whoever us that you're calling to, to make this a part of our life, uh, Father, to seek you in a deeper way, that you would prick our hearts with that and show us, Lord. But, but let's do so in a wise way, in a healthy way. But Father, we thank you, we love you. We just ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everyone online, good night. God bless you. Take care. I'll see you next time.